time for our financial focus. So let's bring in our money men, business and market analysts, and Newsmax contributor, Seth Denson, and also America's accountant, accounting professor at Montclair State University, Dan Geltrude. Good morning to you both. Good morning, Good morning Rachel. Rachel. All right, Seth, a lot of people up in arms this morning, the holiday season right around the corner, but we're having those growing issues with global supply chain, backups at the ports. What's going on? There's that picture circulating online showing all these little yellow dots on the map, and people don't understand how that's actually going to affect them. Well, listen, if they don't, they better get on board because it's going to. Listen, I'm here in Miami right now. I'm like right over my shoulder here is the port of Miami, and I've been watching the cargo ships come in. The problem isn't the ships coming in. The problem is getting the stuff off of the mm -hmm. ships. Uh, that's the big issue here, and it doesn't matter if it's the port of Miami, the port of Los Angeles, up in New York, Georgia. All of those things are impacting us because we can't get the stuff off. It's not a matter of having the stuff. This all plays into the global uh, labor shortage that's going on. And quite frankly, the rest of the world is looking at the United States and they're quite frustrated because all of the stuff is still coming here because our folks have the money to buy it, which means that Europe is getting a little bit of a stranglehold. But nonetheless, unless we can get this stuff off the boats, Come Christmas time, you better hope Santa works extra hard to get stuff down the chimney because you won't be getting it at the stores. Yeah, Santa's got his hands full this year. Dan, as Seth is pointing out, we've seen companies like Costco, Home Depot, Walmart saying they'll buy the whole ship. They'll rent it out to come from China to the U.S. with all of their storage containers, those cargo containers on board to make sure that they get the goods. But if they can't get unloaded, what good does it do? This is major backlogs. These, these uh, ships have been abandoned at the port. Why aren't they being unloaded? Is it strictly the worker shortage? Is there something we could do about that? What's going on? I think it really does relate to the labor shortage. Now, Seth made reference to that there's a labor shortage worldwide, but let's look at why that's happening. So in other parts of the world, they are still being devastated by COVID. There's places where they can't even get vaccines to the extent they need it. In the United States, we have a different situation. There are plenty of vaccines. People won't uh, all take them, and that's a personal decision. That's fine. But here's the thing. People are being paid to stay home, and that's the problem. If we tell people, listen, there are no benefits to not working. We were in an extreme situation. We did what we had to. However, we're past that now. you got to go back to work. What I ultimately think happens is that uh, business owners, entrepreneurs are going to figure out a way to unload ships long term using robotics and taking the human factor out. What does that mean? Less jobs. Mm. That's an interesting point because we're hearing rumors swirling of people that are staying home saying they're waiting for an even better incentive to come back. Obviously, the the basics of supply and demand. Seth, oddly, consumer spending, though, is up 20% from 2019. Do you think this is a sign that people are getting back to their pre-COVID habits, or do you think people are just spending more money for the same stuff? Yeah, I think it's probably more the latter than the former. Uh, but I also think that, it, as Dan alluded to, people aren't working. They have a lot of money from the federal government. They've been piling up. Savings is at an all-time high. And there's that old saying, right? If you got money in your pocket, it's probably burning a hole. So people are looking forward to getting out and spending a little bit of it. I think Dan brings up a great point, and I think you echoed it somewhat, Rachel. The media, the, the mainstream media specifically, but we're hearing it everywhere, talks about this lo global labor supply shortage, but specifically how employees here get to kind of call their own shots. You've got massive uh, pay raises and opportunities, but I oftentimes will think of Cousin Eddie in Christmas Vacation when he's saying he's been holding out for years because he's waiting on this management job. And I think that's what's going to happen here, to Dan's point. Employers are going to figure out how to do this without people. And as long as people are waiting out, they have this false sense of what may be out there in this job market, when in reality, that train's going to pass them by. Seth, you always have the movie references. Dan, we have about a minute left. Let's talk about inflation real quick. The reported that household costs have been increased at an average of $175 per month. Do you have any estimate on if these supply shortages continue? Are these numbers only going to go up? Is that $175 going to go up as well? Yeah, it's absolutely going up. This whole discussion about inflation being transitory, whatever that means, nobody's really defined it, but we're thinking temporary to some extent. It's not temporary. Inflation is going to continue. And the last point I'll make is one of the ways to stop inflation is to increase interest rates, bring those rates up 
to try to put uh, inflation under control. And what you have there is a danger of being uh, put into a recession. It happened in the 1970s. It can happen again. History repeats itself. Of course, we fail to learn from it. Just to put some of this into perspective, those shipping containers cost about $4,000 this time last year to get from China to the U.S. That's up 600 percent now to almost $20,000 or $24,000. Same container. Right. All right. Dan yep. Geltrude, Seth Denson, thank you so much for joining us this morning. Thanks, Rachel. Thanks, Rachel.